Hi people, I'm going to go over some leak detection processes and just like practical tips on how to do it really good, how to do it right, how to actually find a leak. Leak searching can actually, when you're new and you haven't done it a lot, be really intimidating and you can get it wrong and when you do, it's a really big deal. You get that wrong, causes all sorts of problems with the customer, callbacks, major repairs get done that didn't need to get done. First step on a leak detection, you actually need to confirm that your system's low on refrigerant. I've done lots of leak detections on systems that didn't have a leak because I actually just had a failed TXV. Understanding good diagnosis on confirming your system's low. And then you need to estimate how low is this system trying to figure out, you know, how fast is my leak gonna be? If I show up to a system and it's two pounds low, customers at home, they just notice it's not keeping up in the last couple of weeks. I got an idea that I probably have a slow leak, only a small amount of refrigerants lost, and this is a recent problem, this isn't reoccurring. Have that conversation with the customer. When's the last time you added refrigerant? Has this kind of thing happened before? It's time now to actually find this leak. Where do we begin? As always, visual inspection, a good technician, and all of their diagnosis process starts out with a visual inspection. So we're gonna be looking over the system for problem areas. Some of the most common leak places are areas that humans have touched the system. Joint spots, boom, boom, boom. How am I doing a visual inspection and actually looking for a leak on a joint spot? Refrigerant, as you know, is invisible. You can actually see it when it's leaking out. Well, you're looking for the trace it gives. When refrigerant leaks, it always leaves a trail. I'm, almost always, unless that trail has been washed away by rainwater or something like that. There's an oil trail. So if we had our leak here, you would notice that the normal shine and clearness or maybe dryness of the pipe suddenly becomes a little bit more dull and your pipe looks wet in this area. Maybe you have some drips under here. Maybe it's following the pipe down like that. So you look at your oil spots. Let's say we have a leak on our suction joint. Over time, it was done poorly, the vibration of the system, we've started a leak. It's pretty easy to see once you pull this back, everything's gonna be coated in oil. You're gonna be able to feel that. Get used to noticing the difference between something that's wet and actually oily. You rub it, rub your fingers together, very oily, it's gonna stand out. Another sign that you're gonna look for is the bottom of your pan. It's got water in it. Look to see if you see the discoloration of oil on the top of that water. I'll often shine the light in there. That will let me know that my leak source is somewhere inside here and the water draining off the coil is carrying it into the pan. Visual check the entire system. So we're looking at this, we're pulling back. We might have a joint, look for 90 joints. Sometimes I'll just stick my finger underneath the insulation on a suction line. If it's dry and clean, then I don't have a leak that leaked five pounds right here because there would be a bunch of oil inside of there. Taking service cap and points out and looking for hissing and things like that. Outside of your system is your high pressure side. What does that mean for refrigerant leaks? That means they're going to be large, fast, and usually everywhere. Now you do have low pressure element in your system with common leak points on your condenser that you need to look for, but if your condenser coil's leaking, I recently had a call, condenser coil's leaking, another co co company diagnosed and we came out and it's actually leaking from the top of our cap here and they were just getting hits with their electronic leak detector in the area. And so it's easy to misdiagnose that unless you understand that if your condenser's leaking, you're gonna dump all your refrigerant really, really fast. There's gonna be an oil stain. There's gonna be wet. There's gonna be dirt sticking to that oil spot. If I didn't already mention it, kill power. Visual check. Look for your common points. Is your accumulator rusted out? Okay, we're gonna be looking at that. You have uh, really common areas. You have the small capillary tubes that come in from your common suction port right here on your suction line. If you see a leak in here, you're gonna have an oil line. Things below that are gonna be covered in oil. Things above that are gonna be as dry as this. If you have a fast, like a discharge leak, you're gonna have it sprayed and just follow that trail back to your leak. So now it's time to do electronic leak detection. If you found a spot visually, then put bubbles on it, but we haven't found our leak. Personally, this is what I have on my van, the H10. I like the H10 Pro because it also has a battery for portable. This is a heated diode, which is the type of leak detector that you have a sensor in there that actually gets really hot and you can pick up really precise leaks, but you will also sometimes get hits on chemicals that aren't your refrigerant, like a dead rat. Know that from experience. There are other types of leak detectors that 
are more sensitive. Anytime that you turn this on, um, it actually needs the sensor to heat up, so you give that a couple minute, minutes. And you're gonna see all this in your manual. My portable leak detectors, these are fine. I've noticed that each one has some sort of a learning curve. You got uh, this one right here. It can go off pretty easy just by like air moving in, so. You can see that the wind hitting it actually set it off. Or if you're bumping it against something, sometimes it'll go off. So you're going back into your air handler and you hit something and it goes crazy, it goes off. Or even just how quick you're moving it around. You're pushing it and you're forcing air into there that's inaccurate. Or if it's windy outside, like this thing's gonna go crazy. You turn it on, give it a test with the calibration port. Make sure it actually responds. It's time for me to do a leak detection. Hopefully, in the visual inspection, I've actually found some sort of trail that leads me where to check first with my leak detector. And so what I'll do is just put in a clip from in the field. Earlier today, I did a leak detection. I'll put a clip in and you can see what that might look like on a system where you actually have a trail of oil and you can pinpoint where to look first. In your visual check, what you're looking for is oil stains. like stuff that shows you that there's actually been a trace of a leak here, the oil has come out. So you look for a different color in your copper, like maybe the difference between here and here. Also, you're looking for wet spots, like maybe you have dry copper everywhere and then one of your fins is still wet. It's wet because there's oil on it. If the system's been running, of course it's gonna be wet because there'll be condensation on it. So look at the, the way the condensation is sitting on it, like down here. Before I start doing my leak detection, I know where to look. The water is beating up on this. So this is wet too, but the water's not beating up on it in the same way that this is. So there's been oil sitting on here. So in this area, I'm already knowing, bring my leak detector to this area. You're confirming visually and at the same time, speeding up your leak detection process. Then I wanna talk about the process. So understanding that your refrigerant, when it leaks, it's heavier than air. So if there's a leak here, then your refrigerant's gonna come out and then sink down into the system. If I'm moving my leak detector around here and I'm getting a hit in this area, then I can't just immediately assume that my leak's right here. It could be above that at any point. So the pinpoint, you're gonna travel above the area where your leak detector is going off and then bring it back down to that first point that you get your hit. For efficiency's sake, when you do a leak detection, go to the most common places where you have a leak, like the bottom of your coils are gonna be rusted out. Checking our joints, checking rust points, right? Boom, I got a hit on our super awesome leak in the coil. You get a hit like that, in order to ensure that it's not a, a false hit, we're gonna go around our coil in different areas, down low, separate spots on our fin, we're not getting a hit. Then we're gonna come back to that same area and run it over there again. We've confirmed that we actually have a leak right at this point. Our leak detector actually is picking up ser something serious. It's not just going off based on airflow around here or different fumes. So I will do that probably three or four times. I'll be checking other joints, areas that might look like trouble. I'm not getting a hit. And then consistently, I'm getting a hit on that one spot. You need to confirm. Confirm, confirm, confirm. This is a real important part of leak detection. So uh, again, let me show you in the field how I confirmed with bubbles. So what I'm gonna do is I have a leak in this area. I'm gonna spray bubbles on it and I'm actually gonna let you see the, the bubbles spraying out. To confirm now that my leak detector is not like going off on random stuff, I'll start it in an area that I don't like suspect there's a leak. And then I'm gonna travel to the area that I now suspect has a leak. Boom. And then I just pull back and repeat that process using my leak detector to hit the same spot uh, a couple times in a row. So now we've nailed it down to an area and whenever possible, you wanna confirm with bubbles. So we're gonna get some big glue on here from Viper and we're gonna spray a lot of the connection points where metal meets metal, possible leak areas in this, in this spot. A really fast leak, you're gonna be able to see it right away, a really slow leak. Give it a couple minutes. We've actually sprayed our bubbles and we've waited a couple minutes. You need to understand the difference between bubbles you create by spraying aggressively and actual bubbles in a leak. So you can see these are moving because it's still flowing down, it's sagging. That's why you give it a couple minutes sometimes. But a bubble that's leaking, it's going to have that constant movement. And if it's really slow, there'll be this tiny trail of the white. On the top here, 
you see that little white spot yeah that's a bubble and it's slowly getting larger and then underneath it there's actually a much larger one so this is a great example of two different types of leaks the larger one showed up right away the bigger bubbles down here you can see movement by sitting there watching it where the smaller one is just a little white cloud that slowly gets larger and larger as the leak progresses. If you have a leak in your fins, like back in here, you're not gonna be able to confirm that with bubbles. And that's fine, you just take extra time to do that process pulling away, coming back to your spot, actually know you're hitting it. That you're not just picking up some leak that's happening in the area with one of your copper. Maybe you have the copper run underneath the unit through the return area and you have a really fast leak. Every once in a while the leak is so fast that your leak detector will not let you get close to the, to the actual leak. And you can change uh, the leak size, large, medium on here and actually pinpoint larger leaks. You can also on the H10 switch to manual and then I can calibrate exactly where I want my leak detector to get a hit. I usually slow this down to about one hit per second, which is based on my manual. Now I've changed it to a larger leak size. And if it's going crazy in the whole area, now it's not going off as strong and I can pinpoint where it is and find it with bubbles. Once I've found it with bubbles, I need to evaluate, is it somewhere I can repair? Is it this tube, capillary tube, coming into the suction line? This is actually the bulb, but the capillary tube comes into the suction line, similar to this. Is it a brazed joint over vibration? Is it somewhere on the aluminum? Maybe I have an aluminum kit that I can actually repair. We have a seam, evaluate that. I don't advise doing any kind of repair on a coil that is under warranty. Just have that manufacturer replacement actually done. Because if it's leaked here from the manufacturer, we do our repair, we charge our customer for that labor and refrigerant, and it's probably gonna leak somewhere else in the near future. Never stop at that first leak. Evaluate your system, your scenario, situation, your customer, and how low you are in refrigerant. You show up to a system that's almost flat, and you are trying to do a leak detection, and you get a small hit on your coil, that's not your leak. You need to find actually what dumped that refrigerant quickly, what dumped it fast. It could be in the line set. Maybe you have to get access to that line set chase wherever that line sits traveling and confirm if your leak is somewhere in there. Use your judgment on how much refrigerant is missing and continuing to look for that leak. If you find a leak inside your air handler, um, you've confirmed it electronically. Oftentimes a detailed visual check on the condenser is fine. You will see when there's a lot of oil there. We pull out the leak detector outside as well if there's any area of suspicion, oil or something like that on the high pressure side. One of my worst pet peeves is when you see the notes from the technician that I found the system four pounds low in refrigerant. I, I looked for the leak and the straighter, the straighter pin at my service port was leaking. I replaced the straighter and added four pounds of refrigerant. Most of the time that's used in an excuse that we actually haven't found our, our real leak. However, it is possible to have that there. So when I am walking up to a system, whether I know there's a leak or not, I'm always looking at the valves around here. Do I have a lot of oil stains? Is it excessive? Is it coming onto the unit? If there is an oil stain here, has somebody serviced the unit in the last six months? Maybe it has regular service and taking off your gauges, you spray oil in the area. Really easy to get a false hit on your leak detector because you had your gauges hooked up when you first showed up and then you come out here, you've taken off your gauges maybe and there's oil, there's refrigerant all around in this area. If you actually think there's a leak here, you have to confirm it with bubbles. Second thing I wanna talk about, oftentimes, Taking off your gauge, you might have a pinhole leak that you've created in the process with the straighter. It didn't sit back in well enough. That does need to be addressed, but it should always be assumed as the last possible reason for why you found the system low. You have a cap that actually has a seal in it, then there's no reason for you to uh, immediately assume that this is your leak point because you took it off or after you took off your gauge, you noticed there was a little bit of a bubble or a hiss from your straighter port. Likely you caused that. If your cap has a good seal in it and you didn't have oil all the way down around your condenser dripping down, then it's not likely that this is your leak point. Next, if it has been leaking in your cap, 
you're gonna take it out, flip it around, and there's gonna be oil in there. Your cap is gonna hold oil. You'll notice when you take it off, you could even tap it, and you might see oil hit the concrete or whatever. You might see oil actually drip out of there. You've leaked a lot of refrigerant. The oil has set into the back of the cap. So we found a leak, what do we do next? We evaluate system, age, whether the repair is gonna be important to the customer, get all the information we need to actually move forward. You found the leak, you have a coil that's leaking inside, we've confirmed it. We need to check, do we have some type of parts labor on this coil? We need to get all the information for replacing that coil and give that customer the option. So data tag inside, are there things in front of the coil that's gonna block being able to pull it out and put it back in? Is it in an attic where you have a lot of extra labor going into this? You need to think about where's the location of the line dryer? Is it in here? We're not gonna be able to pump down during that repair. We're gonna to have to recover all the refrigerant and actually remove that line dryer. And the person quoting, our parts guy needs to know that. So that information, crucial that you give to them. Also, how much refrigerant is missing? It's nearly flat, okay, then we actually need to collect the amount of refrigerant needed. That's a major repair. That's a huge issue on the system. How old is it? Is it past its parts warranty? Okay, then we need to talk with the customer about full system replacement and actually go over that option with them. Last thing, we can't find our leak anywhere. We've done electronic leak detection out here because we couldn't find it inside. We went over our joints. We've sprayed bubbles on common areas. What do we do next? Our process is we're gonna talk to the customer about the fact that we can't find the leak, but we know it's low. It had to leak out somewhere. Next step that we need to do is quote a line isolation test. And so my next video is going to be showing the process of a line isolation tests and how to perform that accurately and uh, enjoy getting better at finding leaks. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.